when we felt kind of lost or disoriented, um, I think the support is always there. And that's how I could further my study. That's how I found out uh, the course offered at Philip Institute. That's how I further my study. That's how I became the way I am because of that support. And, and they keep encouraging you and said, you'll be fine. And this word of reassurance is also very helpful because you can feel so down and depressed, you know, and stressed and all that. And then when somebody's there to hold your hand and say, oh, why don't you try this? Don't worry too much, you'll be fine, you know. <laughs> well, I was teaching um, home tutoring to migrants. And I've always had a fascination for migrants from a little girl, so. And I had the ability to teach sewing. And I just felt it was a way of showing them and they could teach us as well. The government set us up in a portable um, with three Janome sewing machines and a 40-year-old overlocker machine and then one industrial. And that was not very much as we got, got on because we had too many people. Yes, yeah, three months I was there. On for three months when I was there, I was studying English class. Plus they have in the corner of there too, they have a sewing class too. I was, when no have English class, I passed to the sewing class, joined with them too. That's what I passed my time. I loved English classes. I think um, it was a good way to start my life here in Australia. And, um, and it opened my eyes to diversity. Um, I was studying with many um, other um, uh, people from different backgrounds. If the government think about the, how to get the refugee to live properly, to integrate into the Australian society, we need to give some more opportunity about the, uh, to learn English. English is very important. At that time, I think they have a, a scheme they call um, friendship scheme. And they introduced to us if we want to, to find a host family. So that's why I put my name down and so lucky, an Australian couple, they just um, adopted it. They, they just adopt us. And they came to the Enterprise Hostel to see us every week and they took us to their home for um, the weekend as well. I went every day to the hostel and um, I visited the people in the flats, I visited people uh, outside when they'd moved out of the hostel and um, immigration asked me to, to follow them up or to see if they had furniture or if they were alright or knew where to go when they needed help and that sort of thing. And um, we all worked in con conjunction, it was the Red Cross and, and um, uh, the Baptist Church and uh, Salvation Army. We, you know, we all sort of worked in together and it was, it was a marvellous way to do it because we helped each other. Looking back on our experience and if I compare it with the work I'm involved with today, I work with asylum seekers and refugees and um, I've worked in the Indian community for some years. Um, I bemoan the fact that that sort of enterprise model is no more because I do think that was the most excellent background for someone who, who would come in with no support. I think that it's a fantastic model, very good model, enterprise. You, you, perhaps the, the government should think about that again. Our experience in the hostel was, was short and sweet, um, but it was very powerful because I think, that, you know, we, to today, you know, it's, it was our first time when we first arrived. The, the number EE1, which was the number of our, our room in the green section, will always stick in, in, in our minds. We, the, we are the EE1. Um, we have a photo of that in our family home that represents that, that that's our first time. One of the nicest things I remember was they did uh, Cornish pie and it was in a great big slab like that and it was always, the pastry was dark brown and it, the gravy was lovely and thick 
and um, certain days, uh, especially on a Sunday, when it's lovely and sunny in the summer and the air is still, something takes you back, there's triggers in your life that take your places and this particular sunny day where the air is still, the air is clear, it just feels as if I'm back on, I could be back on Enterprise having my gorgeous Cornish pie. Well, I think it's had a profound um, um, influence in my life. I became a trade union official. I worked at the CFMEU as a, an organiser and the fact that I um, spent so much time with so many people from different backgrounds allowed me to have the empathy to be able to deal with people and I think so many things that I learnt in the hostel about um, you know the, the dignity of um, you know the right to work and you know the equality um, you learn in that place. There was people in the hostel that you know that had left their homes that you know that were fighting the same obstacles that everyone else was yet they're organizing social clubs you know soccer clubs there was parties there was people that were prepared to do things for others and I think that all of those things um, have allowed me to have I don't know, uh, uh, to understand the strength of a, of a human and uh, to be able to exercise that to, to stay alive.